The gunslingers of the Old West have become as famous as any figures in American history. In fact, names like Jesse James, Wyatt Earp, and Billy the Kid are more easily recognizable than the names of many U.S. presidents. But who can be said to have been the deadliest gunslinger of them all? The one with the most kills? Here are some of the deadliest gunfighters in the history of the Old West. Some of them were lawmen or sheriffs. Some were outlaws and murderers. John King Fisher. John King Fisher, born in 1853 in Texas to Job and Lucinda Warren Fisher, had a troubled upbringing. His first brush with the law came at the tender age of 16, when he began stealing horses, a crime that would set the tone for his tumultuous life ahead. As he grew older, Fisher found himself in and out of prison due to his criminal activities, unable to break free from the cycle of lawlessness. By the 1870s, Fisher's path had led him to join a notorious band of bandits known for preying upon Mexican ranchers in the region. However, internal strife within the gang eventually led to a violent confrontation, during which Fisher killed three of his fellow outlaws. Seizing the opportunity, he assumed leadership of the gang and embarked on a spree of violence that culminated in the execution of seven Mexican bandits in 1884. Despite his reputation as a hardened criminal, Fisher still had moments of leisure and entertainment. On one fateful night, he accompanied his close friend Ben Thompson to the Turner Hall Opera House in San Antonio for a performance. Little did they know that tragedy awaited them. After the show, as they ascended to the upper level of the Vaudeville Variety Theater, they were ambushed by unknown assailants. Thompson succumbed to a gunshot wound to the head, while Fisher, though he managed to draw his weapons, fell victim to a barrage of 13 gunshots. Following his untimely demise, Fisher's remains were initially laid to rest on the ranch he owned. However, in time, his bones were relocated to the Pioneer Cemetery in Uvalde, Texas, marking the final resting place of a man whose life was as tumultuous and violent as the Wild West itself. John Wesley Harden John Wesley Harden a notorious figure of the Wild West, earned his reputation as a skilled gunman and outlaw, leaving a trail of violence and controversy in his wake. His journey into infamy began at a young age, with his first killing reportedly occurring when he was just 15 years old. Over the years, he claimed the lives of as many as 44 individuals, solidifying his status as one of the most feared figures of the era. Despite his violent tendencies, Hardin saw himself as a man who often found himself at the mercy of others' transgressions rather than being inherently sinful. He was known to be an avid gambler, relying on horse racing and cattle dealings to sustain himself financially. His prowess with firearms earned him a fearsome reputation, with records indicating that he engaged in at least 21 duels and ambushes between 1868 and 1877, though he boasted of a higher tally. Not surprisingly, Hardin's notoriety drew the ire of many, resulting in a substantial bounty being placed on his head. However, instead of living in fear, Hardin continued to indulge in his vices, spending his days gambling, drinking, and engaging in extramarital affairs. Despite being named after the founder of the Methodist branch of Protestantism, Hardin's actions often contradicted his religious namazake. An infamous incident occurred when he fatally shot a man named Charles Cougar while attempting to silence his loud snoring in a hotel room, casting doubt on his claims of only killing those who deserved it. However, it was an altercation on his 21st birthday that would cement Hardin's place in history. Following a drunken confrontation with Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb in Comanche, Texas, Hardin emerged victorious in a duel, but found himself marked for death with a hefty bounty on his head. Eventually apprehended and sentenced to 25 years in prison in 1877, Hardin's time behind bars saw him pursue education and reform. By 1894, he had transformed into a law-abiding citizen and was granted a pardon for his crimes. Eager to start anew, he ventured into the legal profession 
only to be drawn back into a life of scandal and violence. Tragically, Hardin's attempt at redemption was cut short when he was gunned down by lawman John Selman in 1895, purportedly over a dispute involving payment for an assassination. His life, marked by violence and defiance, serves as a cautionary tale of the tumultuous and unforgiving nature of the Wild West. Dallas Staudenmeyer Dallas Staudenmeyer may not be as widely recognized as some of his counterparts from the Wild West, but his legacy as a formidable lawman and gunslinger remains noteworthy. Born on December 11, 1845, in Bullock County, Alabama, to Lewis and Elizabeth Staudenmeyer, Dallas's early years were marked by a desire for adventure and a sense of duty. At the age of 15, Staudenmeyer attempted to enlist in the Confederate Army during the Civil War, eager to join the fight. However, his youth was discovered, leading to his discharge. Undeterred, he re-enlisted a few years later and served as a private in Company F of the 45th Alabama Infantry Regiment. Despite sustaining multiple wounds, Staudenmeyer remained steadfast in his commitment until the war's conclusion. Known for his tough demeanor and quick temper, particularly when under the influence of alcohol, Staudenmeyer's reputation preceded him as he ventured westward to El Paso, Texas. It was here that he would leave an indelible mark on history as a lawman like no other. Upon assuming the role of sheriff in El Paso, Staudenmeyer wasted no time asserting his authority. In what would later be referred to as the four dead in five seconds gunfights, he swiftly dispatched three men within the first three days of his tenure. This series of deadly confrontations set the stage for Staudenmeyer's notorious reputation as a fearless enforcer of the law. Over the following year, Staudenmeyer engaged in several more gunfights, claiming the lives of six additional men. His unwavering resolve and unyielding courage earned him the respect of some and the fear of many, solidifying his status as one of the most formidable lawmen in the region. However, Staudenmeyer's life was not without its share of conflict and tragedy. He became embroiled in a feud with members of the Manning family, which ultimately culminated in a fatal confrontation. During a gunfight with three Manning brothers, Staudenmeyer was fatally shot from behind by James Manning, bringing an end to his tumultuous and storied life. Dallas Studenmeyer was laid to rest in Alleytown Cemetery in Colorado County, Texas, leaving behind a legacy of courage, controversy, and unwavering determination in the face of adversity. Doc Holliday Doc Holliday, a name synonymous with the lore of the Old West, was born John Henry Holliday on August 14, 1851. His early years were marked by tragedy when he lost his mother to tuberculosis at the tender age of 15. The loss was deeply felt as he shared a close bond with his mother. Despite the hardship, Holliday pursued his education and earned a doctor of dental surgery degree. He commenced his dental practice in the office of Dr. Arthur C. Ford in Atlanta, Georgia. However, fate dealt him a cruel hand when he, too, was diagnosed with tuberculosis likely contracted from his late mother or his adopted Mexican brother, who also succumbed to the disease. With the grim prognosis of a limited lifespan, Holliday heeded medical advice and sought refuge in a drier climate, eventually settling in Dallas, Texas, in October 1873. However, the limitations of his illness forced him to seek alternative means of livelihood. Gifted with intelligence and a sharp wit, he turned to gambling as a means of sustenance. As his health declined, Holliday's demeanor grew increasingly erratic, exacerbated by heavy drinking and the specter of his impending mortality. Recognizing the dangers inherent in his chosen profession, he honed his skills with firearms and blades for self-protection. Holliday's reputation as a deadly gunslinger was cemented through a series of confrontations. In January 1875, a disagreement with a local saloon keeper, Austin, escalated into a gunfight, marking the first of many violent encounters. Despite arrests and legal entanglements, Holliday's propensity for violence persisted. In August 1879, another altercation, this time with a local gunman named Mike Gordon, resulted in fatal consequences for Gordon. 
Holiday's quick draw and deadly accuracy earned him a fearsome reputation on the streets of the Old West. Despite his prowess with a gun, Holiday's health continued to deteriorate. Seeking solace in the reputed healing properties of mineral springs, he found himself ensnared by the sulfurous fumes, hastening his decline. On November 8, 1887, Doc Holliday drew his last breath, his boots still on as he had always foreseen. Though he departed this world, his legacy endured, etched into the annals of history as one of the most infamous figures of the Wild West. Clay Allison Robert Clay Allison's story begins with his birth on September 2, 1841, to Jeremiah Scotland Allison and Mariah Ruth Brown Allison in Tennessee. Born into a family deeply rooted in Texas cattle ranching and Presbyterian ministry, Allison's upbringing was steeped in the rugged ethos of the American frontier. When the Civil War erupted, Allison joined the Confederate cause, serving under Captain W.H. Jackson and General Nathan Bedford Forrest. His experiences on the battlefield shaped his character and instilled in him a sense of bravado that would define his later years. Following the war, the Allison family relocated to New Mexico, where Robert Clay Allison's legend would truly begin to take shape. In January of 1874, Allison found himself embroiled in a deadly encounter with fellow outlaw Chunked Kohlberg. What began as a friendly horse race ended in bloodshed when Kohlberg attempted to draw his pistol on Allison during dinner. In a swift display of reflexes, Allison shot Kohlberg dead, earning himself a reputation for quick and decisive action. Over the ensuing years, Allison's name became synonymous with violence and lawlessness in the Wild West. Reports circulated of his involvement in numerous killings, including one incident where he reportedly decapitated a man and brazenly paraded the severed head into a saloon. He was also rumored to have taken part in lynchings and vigilante justice. In 1880, Allison sought a fresh start in Bobiti, Texas, where he met and married America Medora, Dora McCulloch. Together, they purchased a ranch near the banks of the Pecos River, hoping to leave behind Allison's tumultuous past. However, fate had other plans for Robert Clay Allison. In a tragic accident in 1887, he suffered a fatal fall from a wagon, breaking his neck. His death marked the end of a storied life filled with violence and adventure. Allison was laid to rest in Pico's cemetery, but his legacy lives on in the annals of Western folklore, forever remembered as one of the most notorious figures of his time. Buckskin, Frank Leslie. Frank Leslie, known for his violent tendencies, especially when under the influence of alcohol, earned the nickname Buckskin during his service as an army scout in the Plains Indian Wars. His reputation for brutality preceded him wherever he went, and his time in Tombstone, Arizona, only added to his infamy. Legend has it that Leslie opened the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Tombstone, where he would soon become entangled in a series of violent incidents. His first recorded murder occurred when he shot Mike Colleen during a dispute over Colleen's wife. While Leslie claimed self-defense, Suspicions of foul play arose when he married Colleen's widow just two months later. Leslie's violent streak continued to escalate, culminating in a brutal pistol whipping of a man outside the Oriental Saloon. As rumors of his dangerous nature spread throughout Tombstone, Leslie found himself accused of the murder of gunslinger John Ringo. Although law enforcement couldn't prove his guilt, Billy Claiborne, a friend of Ringo's, was convinced of Leslie's involvement and paid for his accusation with his life, shot down by Leslie himself. Even in a town known for its lawlessness, Leslie stood out for his exceptional violence, terrorizing the citizens of Tombstone. Finally, in 1889, they seized an opportunity to rid themselves of the menace Leslie had become. Two years prior, Leslie had divorced his wife and taken up with a local prostitute known as Blonde Molly Williams. When their relationship soured, Leslie, in a drunken rage, ended her life with a gunshot. With damning testimony from a witness, Leslie faced a jury trial and was convicted of murder, receiving a sentence of 25 years. Surprisingly, 
He managed to secure parole with the help of a young divorcee named B. Stowe, whom he married shortly thereafter. However, Leslie's fortunes took a turn for the worse, and he gradually faded into obscurity. The details of Leslie's demise remain shrouded in mystery, lost to history, alongside the tales of his violent exploits. To this day, his fate remains unknown, leaving behind only a legacy of brutality and bloodshed in the annals of the Wild West. Tom Horn Thomas Horn Jr. was born in Missouri on November 21, 1860, into a tumultuous family environment. His father, Thomas S. Horn Sr., subjected him to abuse, prompting Horn to flee his home at the tender age of 16. Despite his troubled upbringing, Horn found a new path in life when the U.S. Cavalry enlisted him as a scout and interpreter during the Apache Wars. His skills proved invaluable during the mission to track down the notorious Apache leader, Geronimo, and Horn was present at Geronimo's eventual surrender. In the 1880s, Horn gained widespread recognition as a skilled tracker and bounty hunter. His reputation attracted the attention of the Pinkerton Detective Agency, which hired him for various assignments. However, Horn's association with the agency came to an abrupt end when he became linked to the deaths of 17 men, forcing him to resign under a cloud of suspicion. Horn's notoriety only grew when he became embroiled in a bitter feud between the Miller and Nickel families in Iron Mountain, Wyoming, in 1901. The feud culminated in the tragic murder of 14-year-old Willie Nickel. Amidst rumors and accusations, Horn found himself arrested and ultimately convicted of the crime. His alleged involvement in the murder of young Willie, coupled with his drunken boasts, led to further violence, including the killing of Willie's father, Kells, and the slaughter of much of his livestock. On the eve of his 43rd birthday in 1903, Thomas Horn met his end at the gallows, executed for the murder of Willie Nickel. However, controversy still surrounds his conviction, with some modern historians suggesting that he may have been innocent of this particular crime. Nonetheless, there is ample evidence to suggest that Horn was responsible for numerous other killings throughout his notorious career. In fact, some historians estimate that he may have been involved in as many as 50 murders cementing his place as one of the most infamous figures of the Wild West era. Bass Reeves Bass Reeves's life journey began with adversity, born into slavery in 1838 to parents owned by a man named Williams Reeves in Crawford County, Arkansas. Taking the surname of his owner, Bass, short for Bass, inherited his first name from his grandfather, Bass Washington, a common practice among enslaved individuals. From a young age, Bass worked as a water boy before transitioning to a field hand, toiling alongside his parents on the plantation. Around 1846, William Reeves relocated his operations, including Bass and his family, to Grayson County, Texas. It was there that George Reeves, William's son, inherited Bass and took him into battle. Bass's path to freedom amid the Civil War remains unclear, but it is known that he gained his liberty around the time of the 13th Amendment's abolition of slavery in 1865. As a free man, Bass returned to Arkansas and settled near Van Buren, where he embarked on a career in farming alongside his family. However, in 1875, the appointment of Isaac Parker as federal judge for the Indian Territory brought about a significant change in Bass's life. Parker appointed U.S. Marshal James F. Fagan to lead a team of deputies, and upon hearing of Bass's extensive knowledge of the area and fluency in several tribal languages, Fagan recruited him as a U.S. Deputy Marshal. Bass Reeves made history as the first black U.S. Deputy Marshal west of the Mississippi River, carving his name as one of the greatest frontier heroes in American history. Whether appearing as a cowboy, farmer, gunslinger, or outlaw. Bass was known for his unwavering commitment to justice, always ready to wield his gun in defense of the law. He relentlessly pursued gangs and outlaws, bringing them to justice with remarkable efficiency. In one notable incident in 1889, 
Bass confronted Tom Story's gang of horse thieves in Texas. Waiting along their known route, Bass surprised Story with an arrest warrant. When Story drew his gun in panic, Bass's lightning-fast reflexes prevailed, and he swiftly neutralized the threat, ensuring that there was no mercy for those who defied the law in his jurisdiction. Bell Star, Myra Mabel Shirley Reed Starr, better known as Bell Starr, was a legendary figure of the Wild West. Born in Carthage, Missouri, she grew up alongside notorious outlaws like Cole Younger and formed friendships with the infamous James brothers. The Shirley family farm often served as a hideout for the James Younger gang, earning Bell the moniker the Bandit Queen. In 1866, Bell married Jim Reed, a former Confederate guerrilla turned farmer. However, Jim's attempts at a respectable life faltered, leading him to join the Stars, a Cherokee family known for horse theft. Together with the Jameses and the Youngers, Bell and Jim orchestrated numerous successful heists. Tragically, Jim met his demise while attempting to evade arrest for one such robbery. Following Jim's death, Bell became notorious for her involvement in organizing robberies and fencing stolen goods. She reportedly shot at least three men during this period. Known for her ability to manipulate law enforcement officers, Bell married Sam Starr after failing to bribe them. Despite a brief hiatus after being convicted of horse theft, Bell and Sam soon returned to a life of crime. Throughout her notorious career, Bell was rumored to have murdered at least two men who posed a threat to her operations. However, her life of crime came to a violent end on February 3, 1889, just two days shy of her 41st birthday when she was shot to death while riding home from the general store. To this day, her killer remains unidentified. Porter Rockwell Peter Rockwell, a figure shrouded in legend and mystery, played many roles throughout his life, including serving as the bodyguard to Mormon church founder Joseph Smith Jr. His reputation is a complex tapestry, blending loyalty, generosity, tenacity, and ruthlessness, depending on whom you ask. Despite his prominence in historical accounts, little is known about Peter's early life, and the details of his birth remain murky. Conflicting sources suggest he was born either on June 28, 1813, or June 25, 1815. As a young man, Peter forged a close friendship with Joseph Smith Jr., following him from their hometown to New York. The Rockwell family was among the earliest adherents to the Latter-day Saint movement, with Peter himself being baptized into the church on its founding day in April 1830. Following the migration of the church to Ohio, Peter was dispatched to Jackson County, Missouri, which was designated as the central gathering place for Mormon followers. It was during his time in Missouri that Peter honed his skills with a firearm, earning a reputation as a proficient gunfighter. While some accounts depict him as a righteous enforcer of religious doctrine and a deputy marshal, others paint him as an outlaw implicated in various violent incidents. Peter himself claimed, I never killed anyone who didn't need killing, a statement that reflects his perception of justice. One notorious incident linked to Peter Rockwell is the N Affair, which occurred in 1857. It involved the alleged murder of six professional gamblers from California while they were being escorted out of Utah Territory. Although Peter was indicted for his role in the affair two decades later, he passed away before standing trial, leaving the full extent of his involvement shrouded in speculation and conjecture. Despite the controversies surrounding his legacy, Peter Rockwell remains an enigmatic figure whose actions continue to fascinate and perplex historians to this day. Jim Miller Jim Killer. Miller stands as one of the most notorious and lethal figures of the Old West, earning his moniker through a life steeped in violence and bloodshed. Born James Brown Miller on October 25, 1861, in Van Buren, Arkansas, to Jacob and Cynthia Basham Miller, his formative years were spent in the rugged expanses of Texas. 
Miller's legend is fraught with tales of his deadly prowess, with official records attributing at least 14 killings to his name, though local lore often inflates the tally to a staggering 50. One infamous account recounts his altercation with Sheriff Bud Frazier, stemming from accusations of Miller's involvement in the murder of a cattle rancher in 1884. Following a heated exchange, Miller fatally shot John Thomas Coop, his own sister's husband, in cold blood. Despite sporadic periods of relative normalcy, such as his stint as town marshal in Picos and his marriage to Sally Clements in 1891, Miller's darker nature soon reasserted itself. His feud with Picos, Sheriff George A. Fraser, culminated in Miller gunning down Fraser in a Toya, Texas saloon, unleashing a wave of retaliation that saw several of Miller's accusers meeting untimely ends under mysterious circumstances. Remarkably, Miller managed to evade conviction for any of these killings. By 1900, Miller had fully embraced his reputation as a hired killer offering his lethal services to the highest bidder. Renowned for his chilling indifference to human life, Miller famously declared that he would murder anyone for the right price, allegedly dispatching targets ranging from political figures to the famed lawman Sheriff Pat Garrett. The tide turned against Miller when he was apprehended for the murder of Alan Bobbitt, leading to his incarceration. However, justice was swift and brutal as an enraged mob stormed the jail dragging Miller and two other prisoners to the gallows, where they met their fate at the end of a hangman's noose. Though his life ended in ignominy, Jim Killer, Miller's legacy, endures as a cautionary tale of the lawless frontier era, Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, also known as Henry McCarty or William Henry, stands as one of the most enduring figures of the Wild West, his name synonymous with the romanticized image of the outlaw gunslinger. But what sets Billy apart from his contemporaries, elevating him to legendary status? Born Henry McCarty, the future outlaw endured a tumultuous childhood marked by hardship and loss. With his father passing away early and his mother succumbing to tuberculosis, young Henry found himself thrust into the unforgiving world at a tender age. Forced to fend for himself and his younger brother, Henry took up menial jobs, including working at a hotel, where his amiable nature earned him favor with the management. However, Henry's life took a fateful turn when he was arrested for harboring stolen goods, an incident that would mark the beginning of his descent into a life of crime. Escaping from jail, Henry found himself thrust into the company of outlaws, joining the notorious Jesse Evans gang in a bid for survival in the lawless frontier. Under the alias Billy the Kid, Henry quickly gained notoriety for his daring exploits, becoming embroiled in a series of robberies, shootings, and cattle rustling. Despite attempts to negotiate his freedom by offering testimony against other criminals, Henry found himself continually hounded by lawmen determined to bring him to justice. It was Sheriff Pat Garrett, who ultimately succeeded in capturing Billy the Kid, bringing an end to his reign of terror. However, even behind bars, Billy proved to be a master of escape, eluding capture on multiple occasions and earning a reputation as a cunning and elusive fugitive. Yet despite his prowess as a gunslinger and his numerous brushes with the law, Billy the Kid's story is as tragic as it is legendary. Cut down in his prime at the age of 21, his life serves as a cautionary tale of the perils of the Wild West, where violence and lawlessness often held sway over justice and order. Today, Billy's legacy endures as a symbol of rebellion and defiance, his name forever etched into the annals of American folklore. Wild Bill Hickok James Butler Hickok, known far and wide as Wild Bill Hickok remains an iconic figure of the Old West, his legend etched into the fabric of American history. Renowned as a gunfighter, gambler, showman, and peace officer, Hickok's life was a tapestry woven with tales of daring exploits and deadly encounters. Born on May 27, 1837, 
in Illinois to William Alonzo and Polly Butler Hickok, young James was raised in a household steeped in principles of justice and equality. His father's staunch anti-slavery stance likely shaped James's worldview, and their home may have served as a refuge for escaped slaves along the Underground Railroad. Even from a young age, Hickok displayed remarkable prowess with a firearm, earning him a reputation as a sharp shooter in his hometown. By 1858, he had embarked on a career in law enforcement, serving as a constable in Monticello Township. A few years later, he found himself drawn to the frontier, joining the Russell, Waddle, and Majors Freight Company, where he played a role in the storied saga of the Pony Express. It was in 1865 that Hickok's name would become forever entwined with the annals of Wild West lore, when he faced off against David Tutt in a series of disputes that culminated in a fateful gunfight. With nerves of steel and a steady hand, Hickok felled Tutt with a single shot from an impressive distance of 75 yards. Despite facing charges, Hickok was acquitted on the grounds of self-defense, cementing his reputation as a formidable gunslinger. Yet, it was a poker game in Deadwood, South Dakota, that would ultimately seal Hickok's fate. On August 2, 1876, while engaged in a game of five-card draw, Hickok was fatally shot in the head by Jack McCall, seeking revenge for a perceived slight. As Hickok lay lifeless, his hand revealed a pair of aces and eights, forever immortalized as the dead man's hand. Though his life was cut short, Wild Bill Hickok's legacy endures as a symbol of the untamed frontier, where justice was often meted out at the barrel of a gun. His name lives on in the annals of American folklore, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the pioneers who forged a path across the rugged landscapes of the West. Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Berry, Stapp Earp's legacy looms large over the annals of Wild West history, his name synonymous with law and order in a land of chaos and lawlessness. Born on March 19, 1848, in Monmouth, Illinois, Earp embarked on a tumultuous journey that would see him become one of the most iconic figures of the American frontier. Throughout his storied life, Earp wore many hats, quite literally. He traversed the rugged expanses of the West, dabbling in a myriad of professions to make ends meet. From his early days as a gambler and saloon keeper to his stints as a deputy sheriff and town marshal in bustling boom towns like Wichita, Dodge City, and Tombstone. Earp's life was a whirlwind of adventure and danger, but it was Earp's prowess with a firearm that truly set him apart from the rest. Revered for his lightning-fast draw and unflinching resolve, Earp earned a fearsome reputation as a gunslinger who struck fear into the hearts of outlaws and desperados alike. His violent career saw him embroiled in some of the most legendary gunfights of the era, each clash further solidifying his status as a Western legend. Yet it was the infamous gunfight at the O.K. Corral that would etch Earp's name into the annals of history for eternity. On October 26, 1881, Earp, alongside his brothers Virgil and Morgan and the legendary Doc Holliday, faced off against the notorious outlaw group known as the Cowboys in a fateful showdown that would go down in infamy. In a blaze of gunfire that lasted a mere 30 seconds, Earp and his comrades emerged battered but victorious, cementing their status as the epitome of frontier justice. The aftermath of the O.K. Corral shootout catapulted Earp into the realm of myth and legend, his name forever enshrined as the epitome of the fearless Western hero. Though the exact tally of his gunfights and kills remains a subject of debate, there is no denying the indelible mark Wyatt Earp left on the landscape of the American West. Sam Bass Sam Bass's life, though brief, left an indelible mark on the annals of Wild West history. Born on July 21, 1851, in Mitchell, Indiana, Bass's journey into infamy began innocuously enough, with a love for horses and a knack for racing. His early exploits as a horse racer hinted at a future brimming with promise, but fate had other plans in store for the young man. 
It was a simple choice between a job and his beloved pony that set Bass on the path to outlawry. Opting to follow his passion, Bass's decision to prioritize his pony over employment marked the pivotal moment that would shape the course of his life forever. Taking up the role of a cowboy under Joel Collins' employ, Bass soon found himself embroiled in a world of desperation and lawlessness. Collins's reckless gambling habits led to financial ruin, compelling him and a band of cowboys, including Bass, to resort to stagecoach robberies in a bid to stave off destitution. These brazen acts of banditry marked the genesis of Bass's criminal career, catapulting him into the realm of notorious outlaws. With his newfound gang, Bass embarked on a spree of robberies, sparing no one in their ruthless pursuit of ill-gotten gains. However, Bass's criminal escapades eventually caught up with him in a fateful gunfight with Texas Rangers agents George Harold and Sergeant Richard Ware. Mortally wounded, Bass was discovered lying in a pasture west of Round Rock by Williamson County Deputy James Milton Tucker. In a moment of grim irony, Bass, on the cusp of death, defiantly revealed his identity to the posse, ensuring his place in the annals of Wild West lore. He was subsequently taken into custody, where he drew his final breath on July 21, 1878, his 27th birthday marking the tragic end of a life marred by lawlessness and violence. Yet, despite his ignominious demise, Sam Bass's legend lives on as a cautionary tale of the perils of a life lived on the wrong side of the law. Jesse James Jesse James, an iconic figure of the American Old West, left an indelible mark on history as both a legendary outlaw and a symbol of rebellion against societal norms. Born on September 5th, 1847, in Clay County, Missouri, James emerged as a central figure in the tumultuous aftermath of the Civil War. As a Confederate guerrilla during the war, James honed his skills as a fighter and strategist, laying the groundwork for his later exploits as a notorious bank and train robber. Alongside his younger brother, Frank James, Jesse formed the James Younger Gang, which terrorized the Midwest with daring heists and brazen acts of violence. Despite his criminal activities, Jesse James cultivated a reputation as a modern-day Robin Hood, revered by some for his supposed generosity to the downtrodden. However, beneath the veneer of a folk hero lurked a darker truth. James was also responsible for numerous cold-blooded murders, robberies, and acts of terrorism. In a twist of fate that would seal his legacy, Jesse James placed his trust in the Ford brothers, Unaware of their treacherous intentions, believing them to be loyal confidants, James welcomed them into his inner circle, only to be betrayed when Robert Ford infamously shot him in the back of the head on April 3, 1882. The betrayal of the Ford brothers marked the end of Jesse James' reign as an outlaw, but it also cemented his status as a legendary figure in American folklore. His life and death continue to captivate the imagination, inspiring countless books, movies, and songs that immortalize his legacy as both a rebel and a renegade of the Wild West. Butch Cassidy Robert Leroy Parker, famously known as Butch Cassidy, etched his name into the annals of American history as a notorious train and bank robber, leading the infamous Wild Bunch Gang during the tumultuous era of the Old West. Born on April 13, 1866, Parker's life unfolded against the backdrop of a rapidly changing American landscape, where lawlessness and adventure beckoned to those daring enough to embrace it. For over a decade, Parker and his gang terrorized the Western frontier, brazenly defying law enforcement and thumbing their noses at authority. But as the net began to close in around them, with the relentless pursuit of agencies like the Pinkerton Detective Agency, Parker found himself facing the stark reality of life on the run. In a daring escape, he, along with his trusted accomplice, Harry Longabaugh, known as the Sundance Kid, and Longabaugh's romantic partner, Etta Place, fled the United States, seeking refuge in the vast expanses of South America. 
Their journey took them first to Argentina, where they sought to elude the long arm of the law. Yet, the allure of the outlaw life proved irresistible, and they eventually made their way to Bolivia, where fate awaited them in the form of a fatal showdown with the Bolivian army in November 1908. The exact circumstances of their demise remain shrouded in mystery, fueling endless speculation and debate among historians and enthusiasts alike. Butch Cassidy's escapades, both in life and death, have captivated the imaginations of people worldwide, inspiring countless tales of adventure and daring. From Hollywood blockbusters to literary masterpieces, his story continues to be retold and reimagined, solidifying his status as an enduring icon of the Wild West mythos in the modern era. Dan Bogan Daniel Bogan, often overlooked in the annals of American Western folklore, was born in the state of Alabama in 1860. His family's relocation to Texas, likely to avoid the tumult of the Civil War, marked the beginning of Bogan's formative years in the rugged landscape of the Old West. By the tender age of seven, Bogan was already immersing himself in the ways of the cowboy, learning the skills and trades that would later define his tumultuous life. Tragedy struck the Bogan family with the untimely death of Daniel's father, leaving his mother to navigate the challenges of raising three sons on her own. Despite her efforts, the family's stability began to unravel, with Daniel and his two brothers gradually succumbing to the allure of the outlaw lifestyle. One brother met his demise at the end of a hangman's noose for horse theft, while the other found himself incarcerated for various criminal activities. Daniel Bogan, however, initially managed to secure the fringus of outright criminality through tailors of his fiery temper and propensity for brawling were well known among those who crossed his path. A fateful encounter in Hamilton County, Texas, served as a turning point in Bogan's trajectory toward a life of infamy. Emerging from a saloon one fateful night, fueled by drink, Bogan found himself embroiled in a fatal altercation with a local farmer. Whether provoked or in a drunken haze, Bogan's pistol discharged, resulting in the farmer's untimely demise. Arrested and charged with murder, Bogan's claim of self-defense ultimately spared him from the hangman's noose. However, the incident served as a catalyst for Bogan's departure from Texas, seeking refuge in the vast expanses of the western frontier. From Kansas to Wyoming, Bogan traversed the rugged terrain, earning a living as a cattle drover while honing his skills with a firearm. Yet, Bogan's penchant for trouble followed him wherever he roamed. Conflicts with lawmen, including the renowned Sheriff Pat Garrett, over allegations of cattle theft further cemented Bogan's reputation as a troublemaker. As disputes turned deadly, Bogan found himself a wanted man with a hefty bounty placed on his head. A violent altercation in a Wyoming saloon resulting in multiple fatalities culminated in Bogan's arrest and subsequent sentencing to hang. However, Bogan's notoriety had garnered him a network of allies, orchestrating a daring escape that saw him slip through the grasp of the law once more. Legend has it that Bogan's flight from justice led him to Mexico, where he continued to elude capture and live out his days in obscurity. However, the exact details of Bogan's fate remain shrouded in mystery, with conflicting accounts and speculation clouding the truth of his final days. To this day, the enigmatic figure of Daniel Bogan endures as a symbol of the lawless spirit of the American West, immortalized in the annals of Western history. Who can truly claim the title of the deadliest gunslinger in the Old West? Was it the one with the highest body count, the fastest draw, or perhaps the most ruthless reputation? However we may sure it, these gunslingers defined the ERA with their unparalleled skill and fearsome reputation. Even if some of their killings were justified by the law, the rumors and legends surrounding their exploits only add to the mystery. Stay tuned for more captivating tales from the Wild West. See you in the next video.